This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. The X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All Hit Radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome back to the X on everyone. It just seems like last night, about 21 hours ago, I was speaking to you folks. In fact, it was. So welcome back. Thank you for sharing your time with us here on the X Zone. This is a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. It's a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. And we come to you from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. On all social media sites, X Zone Radio TV, our website is TV and our network website where you can find other great programming available 24-7, 365, xzbn.net. Over the years, I've had the pleasure of having this gentleman on the show. His name is Marshall Masters. He is a former CNN Science Features news producer, freelance writer, television analyst, and the publisher of wowusa.com. Since 1999, he has been researching earth changes and Nibiru flyby related topics, including sustainable survival communities, catastrophic crop circles, impact events, and future technologies. Like many others, Marshall sees a dark cloud coming, ExoNation. What makes him different is that he also sees a silver lining, a noble and inspiring star, uh, Star Trek future. Just imagine that. Joining me now is Marshall Masters, and Marshall, welcome back to the X-Zone. It's a pleasure to be back. My goodness. Uh, you and I had a brief uh, chat before we went to air this evening, and uh, first of all, I, I'm so happy you're still in the industry, because you you were one of the uh, one of the tent pegs that uh, held uh, many of these theories together, while so many of the people who who were involved in Nibiru have either gone gone aside or have passed away, like uh, like uh, like. Um, Zachariah Sitchin, um, and you're still here, but you're now, you've now formed a church, I understand. Yes, actually I'm running a parallel track. I mm-hmm. continue to do the science, yeah. but I am also coming at this from a spiritual standpoint because the science alone doesn't really give you hope. Mm-hmm. It's more, you look at it and you don't know what the light is at the end of the tunnel. Except when you're dealing with science, the light at the end of the tunnel is an oncoming train. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it's, uh, ooh, that's kind of spooky. And I can remember a time when, you know, I was really, really, it was starting to hit me what was going on and how our species is being set up to fail through this because, What's really going to be the case here is that this is no, nothing big is going to hit the Earth. We're going to have asteroid impacts. Sure. But this is really about reducing the population. The 1% of the 1% who we don't know, they control the world from the shadows. Uh, what they want to do is cull the herd so it's more manageable. That way, after the tribulation has passed, they can reestablish 
slavery of the planet again. And you're not going to be able to do that when you've got a lot of people, especially after your control infrastructure has Mm -hmm. been destroyed. So their plan is to cut it back. If we look at the Georgia Guidestones, what does it tell us? Keep the population of humanity under half a billion. It doesn't tell us how we get there. And the point is that that's what they want to do. They want to get it down. And then towards the end of the worst phase of the tribulation is when they'll pop up with their inducements. And the program is real simple, Rob. It's, uh, look, you what we brung you. Food, medicine, seeds, Mm. all kinds of nice things to get started with. All you have to do is take the chip. And then once people are, you know, these RFID tags are implanted, Mm -hmm. these are very, very, very sophisticated devices. And uh, it will be, for those who are implanted, it will be a pleasant experience. It'll be electronic Prozac. But these things are multi-frequency transceivers that can send and receive very powerful signals continuously on multiple frequencies. And uh, this is how they're going to control people. And they'll be able to reprogram you or, if they need to, terminate you. Uh, They'll be able to sever your contact to creator. People feel that they have a connection to God. Well, they found the frequency that operates at, and they can block that as well. And then replace it with whatever they want God to be. So... Mm -hmm. It's a very sinister plan, and I saw all of that. All right, let's talk more about your plan and what you've seen on the other side of this break. Exxon Nation Marshall Masters is our very special guest. www. Yows, how do you pronounce that? Yowza? Yowza. Yowza. Yowza.com, but just marshallmasters.com. All right, we'll be right back. Release. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. I am Dr. Carl O'Helvey, founder, president of a new cancer foundation focusing on evidence-based physical, mental, and spiritual interventions, including natural cancer cures, prayer, meditation, affirmations, nutrition, and other related holistic cancer prevention and cure modalities. These are used in cancer education, research, and financing care. I ask for your help to continue this important work by donating at www.holisticcancerfoundation.com. Wouldn't you love to know the secret to everything? I'm Dr. Kimberly McGeorge, and on The Secret to Everything, we will merge the practical with open investigation into all realms of the mysterious. We will talk to cutting-edge alternative health practitioners, those who inspire and motivate you in business and life, 
And of course, we will share stories of the paranormal, conspiracy, and cryptozoology. You will transform because of the frequency I carry, the frequencies my guests carry. Life may never be the same after you listen to this program, for the secret to everything is for you, the listener, for those who desire more in every area of their lives and believe that it can still be found. Listen and discover the secret to everything.com. Little children aren't the only ones afraid of the dark. Millions of soldiers return from war zones with PTSD, anger, frustration, fear, and loneliness, much of which surfaces during the darkness of the night. You have the chance to change the lives of these American heroes. Songs and Stories for Soldiers.us provides free MP3 players for these men and women. With a list of 3 million songs in 16 different styles, 100,000 audiobooks, and 30,000 old-time radio programs, every veteran can find something to soothe and comfort them at no cost. All our players contain an 8-hour audio program designed to help veterans fall asleep. With 1,500 plus vets now participating, it's our goal to deliver 10,000 audio players this year. Go to our website at songsandstoriesforsoldiers.us. Help us help a veteran make it through the night. Welcome back, everyone. Marshall Masters is our very special guest this hour, www.yowza.com, or just go on to any search engine and type in Marshall Masters, and voila, there he is. Marshall, we were talking about the church that uh, that you organized and uh, are running, and I have to ask you, what was, what was your reason for doing this? Well, uh, the church is Knowledge Mountain Church of Perpetual Genesis at Mm knowledgemountain.org. And the reason why I did it was that over the years I've talked to countless numbers of people who are on awareness about what is coming. And many of them have had dreams, visions, and premonitions since they were children. And uh, all of them had the same problem. Because they're so isolated, they all feel alone. And they also have lives that are difficult because they have denier spouses right. or, you know, you stop doing this or I'm going to divorce you. Mm-hmm. They have friends and family ridiculing them. And all they want to do is share their awareness as an act of love. Yeah. And so, you know, I never, I always wanted these people to know they're not alone because I see them. I talk to them every day. And uh, where they see one candle, I see a church full of candles. And, but I came to understand the reason for their awareness, because one of the big complaints that they had is not only I'm, I'm alone, but the other was, why am I in awareness if I can't afford bullets, beans, and bunkers? Because these people, by and large, have big, big hearts, little, little wallets, okay? And... This is when this was understanding this, I came to understand what is the purpose of their awareness. And the ones that are in awareness now are the going to be the teachers, mentors, and comforters during the coming tribulation. And they have been studying this, you know, no matter how much they're threatened by family and friends and spouses, they keep up the study. They can't not do that. And so when things do get to a point where we're all seeing it in the sky and people are going to ask a dumb question and they're going to ask a smart question. The dumb question is, when do I see it with my own two eyes? See, because then they're not going to understand it and they're going to run to someplace like CNN And uh, they're going to be told, don't worry, it's just an interesting light show. Go back to the mall. Continue being a productive consumer. Forget about it. And they're going to go, thank you, thank you, thank you. After all, if it's not on CNN, it's not true. That's right. That's right. And uh, not fake, right? (laughs) Yeah. I I don't know. Let's ask the president about that one. Well, I have to ask, but I have to, (laughs) I, I do say, 
I love it because, you know, the media started this fake news thing and it just has blown back on them in yeah. spades and they deserve it. You know, when I was with CNN back in the 80s, it was a lean, mean news machine. It was an honor to be there. Well, that was then. Now they're just a bunch of script readers. They don't do investigative journalism. All right. So what, what uh, happened at CNN? They're just... You know, they're just out of, uh, doing what they're told to do, mm. and it's this corporatist media. So there's no competition. When I was with CNN back in the 80s, they had to compete with 50 other major news outlets. Now, all you have is market segmentation. You have Fox for the far right, MSNBC for the far left, and like the filling of an Oreo cookie, CNN in the middle. Mm. Let, let me ask you something. Because you worked with CNN and you're very media savvy, how did the media get the polls all wrong when it came between Hillary and um, President Trump? Well, again, they're script readers uh, and they're doing, you know, it's the bias and where they're coming from. Um, I look at the media right now. The media has the same weak link as Monsanto, corn and wheat. They're called monocrops. And anybody that understands anything about agriculture is saying, we're really getting set up for a terrible time. All you got to do is you got this single variety of corn out there. Mm -hmm. You get something that figures out how to attack it. We're in deep kimchi all across the country so because it's, it's a monocrop. Basically, the so same thing that's going to happen. The same thing with what happened with this, uh, you know, with the mistaken call on Trump. It's mm -hmm. monocrop logic. Wow. So do you think that we are in the time uh, that is talked about in the in the Bible, the, the, the um, you know, the end book, the book yeah, of Revelation? I think, you know, I, I come at this as a guy who, Honestly, with the Bible, I just treat the Bible as a wisdom text. Mm -hmm. I don't get any, give it any special reverence with regards to my Planet X research. But over the years, I have really come to see that there's a tremendous amount of Planet X preparation embedded into the Bible itself. As a matter of fact, as an example, let's take the story of Noah's Flood and Exodus, okay, because those were two of the previous flybys. And in a worst case scenario, you would actually have a combination of Noah's flood and Exodus, all of these events happening together. But that would be a bit too overwhelming for allegory, so it's very wise that they're split up in, in the Bible so that it's more piecemeal, but the knowledge has been carried forward through beautifully crafted allegory. And that was necessary. You know, if we take a look at Noah's flood, for example, now there are nearly 200 different deluge accounts around the world. When Captain Cook landed in Hawaii, the first thing he wanted to do is start proselytizing. He's reading the Bible. And, you know, right off, the Hawaiians, when he got to the story of Noah, said, whoa, 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 we, we got that one. We know all about it. We just don't put the end. <laughs> okay. Wow. And, but they already had their deluge account. And all of the deluge accounts, by and large, all talk about the same thing. The ark was built on the side of a mountain. All right. And now, if we're going to have a pole shift event, what will happen is every major body of water on the planet will come out of its basin. So this is the reason why the ark was built on the side of a mountain, so that when the ocean came out of its basin with huge tsunamis, they would rush inland, and once they start rushing inland, going across dry ground is really going to, with vegetation, really degrades the velocity and force of that wave. And so then when it ebbs, it'll go back out to sea. Well, the ark was likely situated in a place where if it had been down in a harbor, the tsunami would have just hurtled it end over end, just absolutely devastated it into matchsticks. But 
It was up on the side of a hill, and so this tsunami wave comes in, exhausts itself, and it most likely ebbed beneath the keel of the ark just enough to lift it off the chocks and pull it back out to sea. So the next logical question that I have to ask is, how did Noah know all this? In all of the accounts, there are special messengers. Mm. There is someone that comes, and it's either divine, God's, you know, yeah. God says, all right, you need to go and do this. And um, in the Colburn Bible, mm -hmm. which I publish, it contains an ancient account that was written by the uh, the Egyptians about the time that the Hebrews were, it was after the Exodus and they were going through the Sinai. And their account is the story of Sisuda and Hanok. And it's extremely similar to the one uh, in the Bible, except it has a lot more detail. But the craft is the same size. Uh, there's more explanations of what happened. But in this case, as with all of these other deluge accounts, in mm -hmm. most every instance, there is a divine messenger of some sort that is involved. You know, so my thinking is that there was actually an extraterrestrial intervention with this, and the ETs were able to calculate the, you know, where this tsunami wave would ebb, and so that's the reason why the ark was situated where it was situated. I mean, think about it. It makes a lot more sense if you're going to build sure. an ark. Build it in the harbor. If you don't have the disaster, turn it into a casino and clean up. And that's that's right, you know, and instead of having fruits and vegetables on your spinners, you could have actually animals two by two. Absolutely. So in, so in all these other in all these other books where they have Noah mentioned, do they also talk about Planet X? There are some that have the accounts where they talk about it. There are the accounts of the Planet X flyby mm -hmm. um, in the Colburn Bible are stunning. I mean, they read like man on the street interviews. There's, you know, there's no allegory. There's no fairy tale. The princess shot the magic arrow in the sky thing. And no, I mean, it talks about it in very exact and precise terms. And we learn that. Uh, you know, this is such a fearful, dis, uh, fearful sight. Now, the ancient Egyptians and the Hebrews both called it the same thing. They called it the destroyer. And depending on the translation of the Holy Bible, mm -hmm. that term is used faithfully, destroyer. Some versions will use that. Others use a different word. But it was the destroyer. Uh, the ancient Celts called it the Frightener. It has also been known as Hercolibus, which is the, uh, that's what the Atlanteans called it. And it has also been called Red Planet, the Red Dragon. Um, in the Bible, it's referenced as Wormwood. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it is something that is pervasive throughout ancient literature. And consequently, it has many names. But as the old saying goes, a rose by any other name is still a rose. How true. How true. So we have all these different names for this one planet. And when we come back from the commercial break that we have to take very shortly, I'd like you to explain to our listeners who may not have heard of Planet X um, what Planet X is, what its significance is. And what people in this time frame of ours on this little blue planet, what they should look out for. ExoNation Marshall Masters is our special guest. www.yowusa.com. That's www.yowusa.com. Or just go on to your search engine 
and type in Marshall Masters. This is the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. If you'd like to send an email, exxon at exxonradiotv.com on all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV. And don't forget to check out the network website at www.xzbn.net for all of the programming that we have available for you 24-7, 365. After this break, with the news, Marshall Masters returns to talk more about Planet X right here in the X Zone. Hi everyone, Rob McConnell here, and I wanted to spend a moment on internet streaming. Everybody has heard about internet streaming, but not many know much about it. Did you know the internet streams just about everything? Movies. From new releases to old classics. TV shows. Almost every show, every episode, and much more. But the question has always been, how do you do it? Well now, thanks to the folks at 123 Ready TV, I have the answer for you. They have developed a simple program app, 123 Ready TV, that you install on your Windows PC, Android smartphone, or Android tablet that can have you streaming like a pro in less than five minutes. You truly won't believe how much is available or how easy it is to do until you try. And for a one-time cost of only $19.99, since this product is a real winner. To learn more about 123 Ready TV, visit our website at www.xzbn.net. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network. Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. How would you like to be able to read other people's minds? Well, the next best thing is here. When you know how to read a person's name, you know how the person thinks, feels, and behaves. Each letter in our name holds a key to unlock our true essence. Our name contains both our gifts and challenges in this lifetime. Nemology science discovers personality secrets hidden in the placement of the letters of our names, including the first and last impression people remember about us. Sharon shows us how to interpret the arrangement of letters as outlined in her book, Know the Name, Know the Person. Sharon Lynn Wyeth created Nemology Science after 18 years of research and testing her theories and has supported thousands of people around the world in understanding themselves and others better. You'll enjoy Sharon's unique teachings as she shares her system to learn the gifts behind your given birth name. Even if you don't like your birth name, there are jewels in this book. If you're thinking of changing your name, ready to name your child, or wanting to get along better with others, this is the book for you. If you'd like to improve your relationships and change your life for the better, get the book today, Know the Name, Know the Person, or visit www.knowthename.com. That's www.knowthename.com. Take a step back in time and discover old Florida cuisine at Marsh Landing Restaurant in Felsmere, Florida. Enjoy delicacies such as frog legs, gator tail, catfish, and swamp cabbage, or enjoy the more traditional cuisine such as hand-cut Angus steaks, ribs, and seafood. Join us for breakfast with a southern flair featuring sweet potato pancakes, biscuits and gravy, and much more. Planning a party? Marsh Landing's private dining rooms can accommodate groups from 8 to 80 people. While you visit, enjoy the historic pictures, artifacts, and stories that line the walls. Marsh Landing is truly a unique experience. Marsh Landing Restaurant, 44 North Broadway in historic downtown Felsmere. Or visit marshlandingrestaurant.com. Marsh Landing, Old Florida cuisine at its best.
Welcome back, everyone. Marshall Masters is our guest, www.yowusa.com, or just go onto any search engine, type in Marshall Masters, and you will find him there without any problem at all. Marshall, how come mainstream media and the scientific community, the, the astronomical societies, they don't talk about Planet X? Oh, they used to. They used to a lot. But what happened? Well, what happened was that there was, uh, and astronomers were talking about it. Now, the first man to talk about it in 1940 was the Chilean astronomer Carlos Muñoz Ferrada. All right. Mm -hmm. And he accurately stated that it's, this is actually, at the time, he called it a black star, which is now we call them brown dwarfs. That's the formal name for them. And uh, that, was, that name was created by the gal that uh, Jodie Foster's character was based on in the movie Contact. Right. Now, uh, Ferrada said that there was this smaller star and an accompanying large planet, and they were coming in on this long elliptical orbit uh, from the southern skies. And it's in a comet-like orbit. And then the next one to talk about it was, uh, of course, we know Zachariah Sitchin, uh, but he was translating the Sumerian text, which talked about Nibiru, the planet of transit. And Nibiru is actually one of the major planets in what I now call the Planet X system. And uh, in 1983, with the IRAS telescope, space telescope, went up to do an infrared survey of the sky. And when they found it, all right, what NASA did was they just said, well, the coolant system, because these cameras, even in space, have to be extra cool, uh, has failed. So um, that's it. There's no more images. Well, according to government whistleblowers, they found Nemesis. And Nemesis was, I remember, as a kid in high school. There was a lot of excitement about the possibility of us living in a binary star system. And, you, you know, what you need to understand is that 90% of the solar systems in our galaxy have multiple suns. So having one sun makes us pretty unusual. And what we have is a binary star system. Our smaller sun is a brown dwarf star. Now, there was uh, an astronomer uh, with the United States Naval Observatory, and uh, he wrote an excellent paper on Planet X, actually appeared in a documentary with Sitchin. And uh, he had a special telescope made, which was used for a sky survey in Australia, or excuse me, New Zealand, at an observatory there that uh, the government had. And then when the images came back, NASA buried all the photographic evidence and he suddenly died a mysterious death of a rapid onset cancer, the kind which has been used before in targeted assassinations. Now, after his death, the whole conversation about Planet X fell off a cliff, and that was it. And now it's, you know, it's one of those things that it has legs. It's coming back. People are talking about it. Uh, one of the things that they really don't want anyone in the scientific community to do is to raise the possibility of us being in a multiple sun system. Why not? You know, that's, that, that's, you know, Katie bar the door. Why? And, well, because that opens up possibilities and, you know, it makes a story that's very difficult to talk about. Now, there were a couple astronomers back in Chile, and this was about a year ago, and what they spotted at the farthest outreaches of our solar system was what they believed the evidence of uh, a planet, a super planet, several times the size of Earth, and what they believed to be a very cold brown dwarf star. And when I saw that announcement, 
I went, oh, boy, you guys are going to get hammered. And uh, sure enough, the Washington Post, which is owned by Jeff Bezos, and, uh, you know, went right after them, smeared them. They had published white papers, and they were saying to the community, hey, let's work this together. Maybe we, you know, maybe we saw a ghost. Maybe we saw the real thing. Let's, let's do it together. Let's, let's do good science. Well, they didn't want them to do good science. And so there was mockery, humiliation. Uh, and at the same time, they were mocking Percival Lowell and Clyde Tombaugh, which is important because Percival Lowell was actually the man who coined the term Planet X. He founded the Lowell Observatory in Flagstaff, Arizona, well over 100 years ago in search of Planet X. And when Tombaugh found Pluto in 1930, it was in furtherance of that search for Planet X, which at the time was Neptune's perturber. All right, something out there was tugging at the orbit of Neptune. And that's what they were looking for. And so when they discovered Pluto's moon, they were able to determine that Pluto doesn't have enough mass to perturb Neptune, that it's actually, it's only about 60% the size of our own moon. So it's not going to tug at anything. But there was a tremendous amount of suppression, um, and that has been ongoing, but now there's just way too many people who are talking. We are seeing a tremendous number of observation videos on YouTube. Now, there are those that are quality work, and then there's a lot of carpetbaggers. And um, yeah, it's we see these salacious headlines, the best Nibiru, whatever, and you know, and people look at it, and they, then they write me and say, "Didn't we see this a year or two ago?" You know. Uh, but what I can tell you is, I get a steady stream of these reports. I published a video, uh, Planet X System Update Number 4, and the second one, which I call Reliable Observations, where I've been tracking it. This is being reported. People are seeing it. And bear in mind, Rob, uh, if somebody sends something to me, the first question I ask them, did you see it with your own eyes? And if they go, well, gee, I don't know. I was just looking through my camera, right. you know, my, my picture gallery, and whoa, it was there. And I go, delete, delete, delete. Okay? Sure. I am looking for images to corroborate an eyewitness observation, or I'm not interested. And have you seen those uh, those images? The Yes, and I have published them, wow. and I have published several of them. We're spotting this object to... The 3 o'clock position relative to the sun, there have been several observations from Brazil, other places around the world. The best observations are at altitude or at the you know, high mountain peak, uh, somewhere where you can get above the chemtrail layer because all astronomers will tell you this chemtrailing is, is really affecting their viewing skies. Could that be one of the reasons for chemtrails? It could be, you know, but chemtrails are like an organic onion. You know, every time you peel another layer, you mm -hmm. just cry a little more, you know. So yeah. <laughs> I like there's that. a lot of reasons for it. Uh, but, that, you know, that could very well be one of them. Uh, mostly it's global dimming because the sun is interacting with its twin nemesis. And let me describe what I call the Planet X system. Okay. And, uh because when I first started talking about it, I was talking about Planet X. We were talking about Nibiru. And, and it's all the same thing, you know, back to the arose by any other name. But what we really have, and this story was broken in 2008. In 2006, my site broke the story on the South Pole Telescope. There was no economic reason for doing the science they claimed to be doing in the most inhospitable region of the planet. They could have done the same science, you know, in South America mm -hmm. for ten cents on the dollar. Well, wasn't you? What, what didn't you say that the reason why they why they built the South Pole Observatory was so that they could track Planet X? Absolutely, yeah. and that is exactly what they did. And there were. 
uh, there were whistleblowers who got a ha- got a hold of the images mm-hmm. and got them up on YouTube, and they weren't there for long. You know, I mean, there's a standard rule when it comes to Planet X: the closer something comes to the truth, the faster it disappears. And so, I've written about these two YouTubers extensively. Uh, the first one, the Bureau Shock, 2012, and I actually had a personal communication with that gentleman. Uh, his account, uh, because he was trying to be anonymous, was hijacked, which is very easy for paid disinformationalists to do. They have the resources. And if your account is hijacked by an impersonator, well, there's a process by which you can go to you know, Google and you can recover your account. But you have to come forward and identify yourself. And if you don't want to be identified because you're an anonymous whistleblower, you don't do it. So what they'll do is hijack the account, and then they put up pornography and whatever else they want to put up to discredit the account. Uh, The other one was DNI um, or something else. It was kind of a cryptic name. Um, I actually got a tip from a whistleblower. Get on YouTube right now. Grab this. And so I did. Uh, That video he put up corroborated Nibiru Shock 2012. And uh, it was on YouTube for maybe about seven hours. And then it was taken down by a security intelligence agency. So, you know, we see this thing. People keep saying, you know, Mm -hmm. where's your smoking gun? Where's your smoking gun? And, well, people have secrets and they don't want other people to know their secrets. What do you think they're going to do? Leave smoking guns laying around? No, it's the first thing they go for. But what would be the harm of the of the powers to be to actually acknowledge Planet X? Like, what's the big secret? Well, the big secret is really the agenda, okay? the We're going to have this coming flyby. There was a fine gentleman by the name of Bob Dean. He was on uh, Project Camelot with Kerry Cassidy in 2008. And he said two things in that interview that have really that stunned me then and continue to hold with it. And this is a gentleman I have had conversations with. He said that we would see Nibiru in 2017, and he added, "You can take it to the bank." And he also said that this would be a worst case scenario flyby that when it's going in its southward leg, back to the its point of perihelion, its furthest distance from the sun, that we would be on the same side of the sun, which means we're going to have a pole shift event. Now, last August, uh, Major Ed Dames, remote viewer, Mm -hmm. uh, he had his swan song presentation in Las Vegas about Planet X. All right, let's take a little bit of a break here because I have to take my final break. Exxon Nation, Marshall, Marshall Masters is our special guest. His website is YOWUSA.com, and if you'd just like to type in Marshall Masters in your search engine, you will find him. Very interesting gentleman, and Marshall and I will return as we wrap up this hour here in the X-Zone, talking about Planet X from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. Hi everyone, Rob McConnell here, and I wanted to spend a moment on internet streaming. Everybody has heard about internet streaming, but not many know much about it. Did you know the internet streams just about everything? Movies. From new releases to old classics. TV shows. Almost every show, every episode, and much more. But the question has always been, how do you do it? Well now, thanks to the folks at 123 Ready TV, I have the answer for you. They have developed a simple program app, 123 Ready TV, that you install on your Windows PC, Android smartphone, or Android tablet that can have you streaming like a pro in less than five minutes. You truly won't believe how much is available or how easy it is to do until you try. And for a one-time cost of only $19.99, this product is a real winner. To learn more about 123 Ready TV, visit our website at www.xzbn.net. 
This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the x Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. True healing must address four levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, for us to live joyful and productive lives. We tend to treat three of the four, leaving the spiritual languishing. If you're tired of the same dysfunctional patterns cropping up in your life, soul balancing is for you. Trixie Phelps, owner and founder of Soul Balancing, is a naturally gifted energy healer trained in numerous esoteric forms, including shamanism. Trixie has created a powerful modality that safely and effectively clears your energetic field. A soul balancing session can remove interference, heal trauma, and restore your hope. Contact Trixie for a life-changing long-distance session today, www.soulbalancing.world. There's a legend shared by many indigenous cultures of a time when the nations were cast to the four corners of the world. Each nation was given a body of sacred knowledge that held a different portion of the truth to preserve. True reality could not be known until all the nations reunited, combining the information. If a single one was missing, the world could not be reborn and darkness would prevail. The Science of Magic Radio is dedicated to reuniting the sacred knowledge. With the understanding, none of us has all the answers, but together we can open new perceptions and possibilities. Through our combined vision, the world can be reborn into a place where darkness no longer prevails. Join me, Gwilda Wiecka, and the Science of Magic daily on the Exxon Broadcast Network, xzbn.net, or visit us at thescienceofmagic.net. Exonation Marshall Masters is our special guest, www.yowusa.com. And um, he's got uh, a page on his site for a 99-minute quick immersion videos with a lot of historical details. It's great for you newbies out there at www.yowusa.com forward slash YT Media. Uh, as I was saying uh before we went on air, Marshall, thanks very much for coming on the show. Love having you back on any time. But let's get back to Planet X because we're talking about present day times. The year is 27 for another Planet X flyby. Absolutely. And I think that uh, because Major Ed Dames, he's famous remote viewer. Yeah. I mean, top military guy. Okay. Remote viewing is something that's used extensively by our intelligence agencies, but also the Russian intelligence agencies. They use remote viewing and they use psychics because they get results. The difference between the two nations is Russia favors psychics and the United States favors remote viewers. And so Ed Dames is actually doing contract work for intelligence agencies on both sides. And 
Back in 2004, he published a video called The Kill Shot, and I still have a copy of that. And at the time, he was talking about that we would have, uh, there would, about the time a planet passed between the Earth and the Sun, there would be something he called a kill shot, which was uh, a solar event. Now, what he's really describing with this kill shot is a solar sprite, or what we could call cosmic lightning. And, uh, you know, they say water erosion made the, uh, you know, uh, the Grand Canyon in Arizona. I'm not so certain about that, but let's go to Mars, uh, Val Marineris. That's the largest canyon in the solar system. And... Um, don't tell me that water erosion caused that. I think that's more a case of what we call cosmic lightning or solar sprite. And that is what Ed Dames is seeing. So the thing here is when do we see it is the issue. Now, Ed, last August in Las Vegas, finally, and I mean for years, people have been beating on him like a drum and he wouldn't talk about it because if he did, he knew what was going to happen to him. He had, he's probably signed so many non-disclosure agreements, he's forgotten half of them. And those folks are not pretty when you bust an ND. Well, he, uh, what he said is that we will, Planet X is definitely real, that we will definitely see it, and we will see it this year. And he said November 2017. That's when we see it. And he said, when we do see it, it'll appear the size of the moon in the sky. And once we do see it, now you have, there you got two former people highly involved in the military, access to secrets. Uh, he's been remote viewing it. And uh, what he's talking about is not going to happen in 2017, the kill shot. All right, that's going to happen a few years later. We're talking about once we see it, the tribulation, first half of the tribulation is anywhere from about a four to five year period of span of time. And uh, what will happen is this system and nemesis, which is this binary twin, small brown dwarf star, very dirty, very difficult to see unless it's real close. Otherwise, at a distance, you can see it with infrared. And it has three major planets, uh, which we've identified in my book, Being in it for the Species, as um, Helion, Arboda, and Nibiru, the outermost planet, major planet. And it has minor planets, like our solar system does as well. And what will happen is, right now, we have a lot of images of this object at three o'clock relative to the sun and our horizon. But remember, we're tilted 23.5 degrees. Mm -hmm. So when we see it at the sun's three o'clock in space, if we could view it from a point of view of a satellite, so to speak, we would see it more about the sun's 130, which is perfect sense because it's in this clockwise comet-like orbit and it's coming up around and then we're going to cross underneath it. So it's going to go over our heads. And when we see it, it's going to be large. When you start hearing people say, you know, uh, whoa, and there's just tons of videos. And I mean, at some point, the media is going to have to report it. And when you hear the talking heads going, it's just an interesting light show, then you know that's the last window of opportunity you're going to have to prepare. And how do you prepare? Well, that's what I talk, that's why I formed my church, Knowledge Mountain Church of Perpetual Genesis. And my belief is that what I see out there, and bear in mind, I do a lot of relocation work for people. Uh, they pay me and they're happy to pay me. They like the results. But what I see is a lot of me and mine prepping. It's based on Cold War shelter strategy. You know, just get through the big event and then you're smart. You'll figure it out as you go along. Mm -hmm. Well, that's an unproven model. What I believe is going to work is where you're going to have faith-based communities of 100 or more people 
ideally about actually 150 to 200, but 100 or more are going to be viable. And those are the ones that are going to have enough critical mass to get through. They're going to be hard targets. Now, the ones that are me and mine preppers, you know, uh, just a few people on a bunker, they're going to, I call them bunker bunnies because they'll be food source for the nasties. And there are going to be plenty of nasties out there. But the nasties are going to leave the communities alone because 100 people with with rifles sure. is a little bit of a hard target. You it, know, almo- it, almost sounds like, it, it almost sounds like uh, that, you know, safety is in numbers. Absolutely. Yeah. See, there's a dichotomy here. Um, people who go with this old Cold, cold War strategy, mm-hmm. me and mine prepping, their belief is that there's safety in technology. Wrong. Yeah. My belief is more consistent with the pioneers who crossed the West with very low technology solutions. Because isn't it possible that when this this does happen, that there will be major EMF uh, events that will actually kill the grid, and anything that is technologically uh, sound or or based isn't going to work anyway? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, that was well. Newt Grin- Gingrich wrote a forward to a book called One Second After by Forsyth. You can get them on Amazon, and the used copies are, are inexpensive. I'd suggest to folks to get that and read that. Uh, they talk about a scenario in which two medium ballistic e- EMP weapons are detonated over the United States, just two of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, the resulting chaos. Uh, at the end of the book, you really read that the resulting chaos result in 90% of all Americans perishing. Okay, that's just two EMP weapons. Uh, what we're looking at in terms of the coming tribulation is, you know, that's hors d'oeuvres. Aren't we talking about a global event instead of a localized event? Absolutely. Yeah. This will be a global event. It is going to affect, you know, all around the world. And it's going to be a series of events. We'll start having impacts. Uh, and then from the impact events, uh, the first major thing that's going to happen will be the pole shift. And that's going to occur when Nemesis reaches uh, as it's arcing down, heading back to the southern skies. And it goes from perihelion its point where it's closest to the sun then reaches the ecliptic and the ecliptic imagine you know take the sun's equator and just stretch it out to the 12 constellations Mm -hmm. of the zodiac all right that's the plane of our system when it reaches the plane of our solar system the ecliptic that is when the pole shift happens and that is when we have the days of darkness prophesized in the bible and exactly the event as foreseen through remote viewing by Ed Dames and his team, which he first published in his video 2004, The Kill Shot, in which he says a large planet becomes between the Earth and the Sun. That large planet will be the outermost planet of the Planet X system, namely Nibiru, which is several times the size of the Earth. So when that does occur... We will have days of darkness, a pitch blackness that is completely unimaginable. And this will be a time when you're going to have uh, the sun's binary twin and all of its planets. Everything's going to be in a row with the sun. We're going to have horrific solar activity, exactly what Ed Dames is talking about, the kill shot. And we're going to see... uh, massive solar storms and we're going to see solar sprites or cosmic lightning and as long as they're not earth directed well they're for the grace of god but the ones that are earth directed are going to leave a crease they're going to hurt so this is going to be a time when you go to ground if you're on the surface, you're going to be a poodle in the microwave, so to speak. Well, what I'd like to do uh, is, unfortunately, we're out of time for today, Marshall, but I'd like to get you back on in the future so we can talk about this more and maybe we can help some folks and be part of the solution instead of part of the problem. It'd be my pleasure, Rob. Marshall, take care of yourself, my friend. Let our listeners know where they can get your book, where they can get your video, and how they can find out more about you. 
just go to uh, marshallmasters.com and it'll link out to everything else. I have my newest book, Surviving uh, Survival Wellness Advocacy and the Big Win. You can get it on Amazon, but if you go to my site, knowledgemountain.org, you can download the ebook for free. Please do it just to see if surviving this is going to be your cup of tea. Marshall, take care. Great talking to you again, and I look forward to the next time we meet back here in the X Zone. Until then, be safe, my friend. Will do. We'll be back on the other side of the news. Don't go away.